Hello everyone, Bruce Schwartz here from Montreal, Quebec, in the country of New Zealand, no, Canada. I wish it was New Zealand, actually. Actually, yeah, they got volcanoes in New Zealand, um, right? Yeah, Ganymede. A uh, quick look at, this is what you're looking at. NASA says there's a thin layer of atmosphere, you know, oxygen around Ganymede. Isn't that interesting? Planet Jupiter and the Galilean moons. Look very carefully inside. Look at that. Got a nice close up. This is clear. It's compared a lot better than the last time I showed it. I showed it. Look at the other flash of light. Did you see it? There's more than one flash and those lights are moving by. If you want to say it's a planet, okay. Someone was telling me it was a planet. It's like, guys, Jupiter's there. I don't think there's a planet going by Jupiter that close or that small, unless it's Mercury. Anyways, here it is going by uh, one of the Galilean moons. Nice close-up of the UFOs going by Jupiter. It's hard to believe that we can see things that well. And this, I zoomed up, if you remember the first time I showed it. And look, it's still going by under the star there to the right of Jupiter. Watch it. You'll see it appearing going by. There it is. Even colors appearing, which is obviously clashing the atmosphere, either Earth, whatever, right? We're not going to say because it's a blue object. But look, and look at the size of it. And you can see it has a bloody light or something emanating from the front of it. This is pretty incredible. It's You can literally see the colors of it appearing. There's another object in front of it further down. One just appeared to the right behind it. So, of course, it's about slowing things down. We're zoomed up very, very close. People are saying we see Jupiter all pixelated. Yeah, of course. Um, that's refraction of light, right? But what we're looking at is that the proof of that object that's right there. And to see how hard it is to be able to show it, you see how close I have to get to be able to show some of these things. So, of course, it's not just something that I'm picking up, right? I have to slow down the footage to have to actually look at what I'm seeing. But um, I'm telling you, watch, we're going to zoom up because there's flashes that are appearing around the stars, which I always love seeing. It could be other stars further out. But here's the thing. Watch this one. This is the difference there. See, I'm the one flashing and I'm passing it several times for you. It was just one flash and that is a very pronounced yellow flash. It's a spark. It's something, whether it be a UFO taking off, whether it be an asteroid going by, it's something. Asteroids don't usually appear like so. The asteroids, you can see the debris. You can see the fire emanates. It goes up and then it goes down and it breaks apart. Look here to the left. There you go. Something pretty big, actually, that we saw there over on the left there. Uh, let's see that again. So we got more proof. There it is. Isn't that incredible? What about this rectangular square, my friends, that we see over top of Copernicus Crater just on the offside? We're going to look at some squares on the surface. I'm going to show you a square inside of Mare Serenitatis that I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have not ever seen because I haven't either. Not even in my footage. And yet I've gone back to my footage and it's clear as day. Beautiful close-ups, right? Let's start the squares, the rectangles, and the one, and look at that one. What do you think of that? It's pretty apparent right inside Mare Serenitatis. Look at that right there.
Signs of oxygen can clearly be seen on uh, pictures of celestial objects thousands of light years away from here. Why would this blue that we're seeing on the moon not be an oxygen blue line as we see around our Earth, supposedly? Earth's geocorona is the end of where the atmosphere reaches around our planet. It extends, we now know, as of not too long ago, far beyond the moon itself. NASA themselves admit to a transient lunar phenomena right there, supposedly right behind Plato Crater. But what they're not telling you guys is that surface craters, some of them are reflective like this phenomena that we're seeing here, and some of them are white without the reflectivity, as you can see even here as we're panning across. So there's more than one transient lunar phenomenon on the surface. I'd say half of the craters are transient. Let's go see a few more examples. But first, look at that outline right in Serenitatis. There's even another rectangle down the center. They appear when you descend the exposure. Do you realize I just showed you guys a square symmetrical object right inside Mare Serenitatis that is massive? Think of it. They're constructed. So now we get into the good stuff. Cindy Luhu channel. I posted it in the community. People will be going your way, my dear friend. Look to the left, Cindy. Top left, that's Clavius Crater that you showed the other day. And over to the right, Tycho. And right here, and um, um, Monto, I'm not sure the name of this one, right beside Clavius on the other side of the big crater. Probably the one you were showing yesterday, Cindy. Look at that line that you can see right there on the surface as clear as day. And there's, you know, we're along the Terminator lines. Now let's look, take a look at another a special thing that I think the moon has. You see Tycho on the right, another crater on the left. Why are they so similar? Do you see the similarity in both of them? There are, I'd say, tons of craters on the moon that show similar uh, signs that there are more than one crater that, that have the exact same, and I repeat, the exact same characteristics of the construction of the way these craters are made. Some of them are right down to the T. And let me tell you, why do they all have structures in the center, spots in the center? Most every one of them.
Let's go see an amazing close-up of Rupus Recta, The Wall. Bob Down, thanks so much. Sébastien Brard, thank you. Merci. André Wage, Christy Lindsay, Gerald Dowling. Gerald Dowling again. Ruby, Allnut, Mike Allen. Thanks, everyone. Brian Roy, Leonardo Napoli, Diana Drakeford, Martin Holmes, Pleading 777 Viking. The list does not end. And it's thanks to all the names that you all see right here at the end of each video. It's thanks to them. This channel exists.